What it do, YouTube? It's your boy Eisenhower's Tactical. I don't know if y'all can see me. But yeah, man. Uh, back with a video. This might be a little doozy. Uh, I mean, the topic is basically what? Where would you be safer in? Uh, basically, a shit hit the fan situation. Like we're we're talking about, you know, civilization is falling apart. We don't have no more law enforcement. Uh, we still have a federal government. We're not a, we still have a nation and everything, but the cities have all, the, the country has went to hell and now it's this free for all. People are just all over the place, you know? Ain't no zombies, just, just human savages all over the place. Shout out to T-Electric. Uh, yeah, so what we're saying, like what areas, what areas would be safer? Uh, just let you know, YouTube, I'm in a safe control environment. Um, what areas would be safer, man? Would it be, you know, the hood, you know, all the inner city? Uh, would it be the suburban areas? You know, would it be um, the metropolitan big it would downtown, big tall buildings and towers? Would it be uh, folks out in the countryside with farms, many acres spread out, one house per per every two miles? Maybe would it be people already who live in these areas? Like, what would be safer? So, I mean, we could break it down. Uh, oh, by the way. Dog 19, you know, safe environment. Uh, let's start in the inner city. What is some of the, some of the advantages of probably being in the inner city and some of the disadvantages? We're not going to go through every last one of them. You guys let me know. Drop a comment in the box. So since I got a little experience living in the inner city, I would think uh, the, the biggest advantage would be uh, identifying a threat. I think, you know, if you grew up in a project housing area or you live in a hood, just, you know, whatever, it ain't gotta be projects, but just live in a hood, inner city, grimy, uh, low income, you know, already been that way. So when shit hit the fan, that group of people will have the least problem adjusting. You see what I'm saying? So they won't have a problem adjusting to a apocalyptic situation where shit is just chaos all over the place because they pretty much live in chaos anyway. Um, so. You know, you're talking about a large population of the homeless and all that. So those folks are not gonna really drastically have to do too much different, other than just keep surviving, which they've been doing anyway before the city defense situation. So that would be one of the biggest advantages I would think is people who live in a low income area, you know, a lot of crime, uh, you know, drug usage, homelessness. I think they gonna have that would be their huge edge. They'll be they would identify if people came down from the so to speak the hilltops into their environment to try to scavenge or find food or get a resource, they will identify you real fast. So that would be, I think that would be a huge advantage for them. Now let's get into some of the disadvantages of being in a poor, well, if the government structure is fracturing and cracking at the seams and they're cutting back fundage and we, we, we cut back waste management, we're not, there's no more utilities. It's if the, whatever's running is running and who's ever controlling is controlling it. So now you're gonna be strapped for food okay uh that will be a huge disadvantage in an inner city area uh because once we found the shit the fan again we're talking about high crime high theft you think it's looting now and smashing grabs when the shit hit the fan boy you're gonna see a whole new level of smash and grab uh so all those department stores and grocery stores which is abundance of them in the inner city area but they'll all be depleted immediately so that resource will be gone wiped out in hours um the other disadvantage would be uh I would say probably getting out. So you're talking about getting out, trying to get away from there. It's going to be hard to get out because everything's going to be bottlenecked. Okay. Um, so you won't have no government support. They, you know, all that FEMA shit is going to fall apart. They're going to, all that shit's going to go to the rich and into the government. People don't realize that those agencies will crumble first. So you would have to figure out how to get yourself to them wherever they're reaching out to. So I think you will have less health resources from the federal government. Uh, you would uh, the food would be a definitely uh, 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 a big problem, and so and actually trying to get out would be a problem. So those are, that 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 to me what I get intercede. So they got some advantages, but they gonna have some real uphill struggles when it comes to resources. Now, upper middle class. Clearly, the advantage of them is they gonna have resources. They gonna have larger properties. They gonna be able to probably build in a more of a tight circle because they all have are like-minded and they already live in the same area with the same income. So they're probably gonna bond quickly 
Whereas in the inner city, you're still gonna have strife and, and division and, and fract factions of little groups together, but you got all the hooligans and there's no unity already. So that's gonna, that ain't gonna just all of a sudden just come together now. They're just gonna be able to identify you a little more. Well, the middle class, they won't be able to identify who the bad guy is. Because remember, when people start coming down for resources, they're gonna go to where they are. And they'll probably go to the middle class neighborhoods for fuel, energy, you know what I'm saying, food and stuff like that. But they're gonna look like each other, so they probably won't be able to pick up on who's trying to really uh, bamboozle them or, you know, come in and try to take over what they got left. So that would be a disadvantage in the middle class area, okay? Because everybody's gonna assume that everybody's on the up and up, and that ain't gonna be the case. So your neighbor might be trying to just, you know, do you in, selling you out to the highest bidder so they can feed their family. So you won't be able to identify who the uh, true villain is or who's the uh, who's trying to infiltrate your area. So that would be a. Uh, Disadvantage, but the advantages would be resources, food, energy, uh, transportation, and getting out. Those would be the advantages because you probably would probably could still, you might know somebody own a small airplane. Now, all you gotta do is just drive your family to his little airport area and fly the fuck up out of there. You see what I'm saying? So it's gonna be easier to get out. You got automobiles and stuff like that. Where in the inner city, there's a lot of bus and public transit people. Okay, now, uh, the, the advantages for pretty much the rich is that they will be able to hire people to do all their dirty work. So they don't have to put boots on the ground. They can be, they got, they gonna have compounds. They'll have plenty of ammunition, firearms, people to protect them, uh, things of that nature. But one of the disadvantages of the rich is that everybody's gonna be trying to come get it. So if once they can flip your military or flip your, your armed security or whatever, you know, it could be all bad. So you got to pay attention to how you treat people at the top before you get to the situation. So if you've been shitting on people all this time, it ain't gonna get better for you in an apocalyptic situation. So that's some of the advantages and disadvantages. I just wanna bring that up, you know, kind of a fun topic. I ain't trying to really get too serious, but I just think like, what would be, you know, like what would be the best area, best place? Cause you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, everybody gonna be strapped, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just saying, what, what would be the, what would be the best uh, place? To, who, what, what environment would what, what be safer? Now, far as firearms, what firearms you would see, man. Let me know what y'all would think. Like, so I think in the inner city, I think you're going to see, I think you're going to see a lot of pistols. I think you're going to see a lot of pistols. I think you're going to see a handful of, uh, quite a few revolvers. I think you're going to see some shotguns. You will see a few ARs and, and, and Dracos in the hood for sure, but not the majority. I think you'll see a lot of pistols. Now in the middle class, I think you're going to see a lot of the ARPs, ARs, you will see some shotties, you know what I'm saying? But you'll you'll get a little bit more uh, ARs and stuff like that. Now the rich, they gonna have everything, okay? So, you know, they ain't gonna, they gonna have a whole arsenal at their disposal. You see what I'm saying? Drones, all kind of shit. But yeah, in the, in the street, it's gonna be heavily armed, but it's gonna be a lot of handguns. So a lot of cats gonna be walking around and, and you know, they gonna be pulling out on you, boom. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that's why in the hood, they gonna have a little bit of a tactical advantage because they gonna already know that you ain't from there. And that's why in the upper middle class, you got to have patrol, people guarding y'all little block and everything on top of rooftops and all that kind of stuff with some long guns, some, you know, some, some rifles, some boat actions and whatnot. You see what I'm saying? So, and I'm pretty sure the rich, they gonna be having the MP5s and all that and the, and the ARPs too. You know what I'm saying? The 300 blackouts, cause they gonna be kind of patrolling and be inside their compound and on top of the rooftops. They gonna probably, you know, they might have a bear to back you up. You have a bear, you know, 50 cows on top of the building. So it's gonna be interesting to see, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm gonna let it see all that shit, but if some shit pop off, it's gonna be interesting to see who really gonna have they numbers their strength in numbers. Who's gonna have their strength in numbers? Meaning what apartment complex, what block, what blocks right now in America are connected talking about this shit. Like, hey man, some shit pop off. Do we got a food storage? Do we got this, you know, you got that? I don't think all that's going down. I don't think a lot of people are unified. I don't think villages are strong and people are all trying to work together on say, I think it's gonna be cutthroat as hell. I think it'd be more unity at the top with the rich folks because there's less of them. I think in the countryside, I think they gonna have more unity. The farmers, they will link together, try to band together to kind of corner off an area, but they ain't gonna have the numbers. See, the numbers is gonna be in the hood, but will they unify to go take over from the rich? 
You see what I'm saying? So, hey, shout out to Big Boy Noise. I was watching that little series called uh, Vikings. I ain't, man, I'm the last person on earth to see this damn thing, blood. My kids have said, oh, it's already a redo. And they already saw it. The youngsters I work with, they already seen it. And I, I'm on season two, episode three. So, man, the way he did his first girlfriend, uh, wife, that was cold-blooded. Wouldn't got another little bride. But anyway, man, that shit's crazy. But they, they cutthroat, man. They go around. They come in taking shit, cutting throats and man dude hey vikings is cold-blooded yeah i'm watching that one too big boy noise but uh but yeah man but yeah i was just curious man let me know what you guys think what firearms you would see what areas would be you know easier to infiltrate what areas would be harder to infiltrate where would the resources be you know what i'm saying it's something to think about man it's your boy eyes near tactical just having a little fun man like come subscribe everybody stay blessed peace